looking at precipitation reactions. Precipitation reactions are where we are mixing two aqueous ionic solutions together. So for one aqueous ionic solution, in the solution, we have free cations and free anions floating around. So when we mix the solutions together, we have two cations and two anions floating around together. That gives us a total of four possible combinations, the original two and two possible products. So what I'll do first is write out the possible products here, and then we'll look at the solubility rules to decide if we have a reaction going on. So look at the two possible products. We're going to combine the cation of the first with the anion of the second. The cation of the second with the anion of the first. And when we do that, we have to know the charges of these ions so we can write out the, the proper products. So sodium, a alkali metal, we know is a plus one charge. Nitrate, polyatomic ion, we have to memorize our polyatomic ions. Nitrate in on three comes with a negative one charge. So we have a positive one, negative one, we're going to have a Na and O3. And right now we see that we have two of each, so that'll come out in front. So this two does not follow as a subscript on the sodium, it does not, the two here does not follow as a subscript on the nitrate, but they'll end up in front as a coefficient. The subscripts, that two and this two, are reflective of the charges of the sulfate. The sulfate is a two minus, the barium is a two plus. So since there's the same magnitude charge, a two plus, a two minus, we just need one of each to make the neutral. So those are the two other possible products once we mix together these two. If one of these is insoluble, it'll fall out of the solution as a precipitate, a solid, and a reaction will occur. If they're both aqueous, if they're both soluble, then no reaction actually occurs. So in the second one, we have um, sodium bromide. We're going to take that sodium, we're going to combine it with the acetate. We're going to take the silver, combine it with the bromine. Sodium alkali metal has a positive one charge. Bromine, a halogen, has a negative one charge. Silver is a transition metal. That's one of the transition metals with a predictable charge of positive one. Acetate, again, a polyatomic ion. We have to learn our polyatomic ions, memorize our polyatomic ions. Acetate has a negative one charge. So we have positive one, negative one. So we have a sodium acetate. And then a silver with a bromide, a positive one, negative one. So we're going to reach. So to figure out if a reaction occurs, we need to know how to use our solubility rules. Uh, this will be posted on Canvas. There's a slightly different version of them, uh, different formatting. That's on the periodic table I will be giving during tests also. So the top portion of the line are generally soluble. And the first several of these have no exceptions. So our alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, uh, they will always be soluble no matter what they're combined with. The ammonium ion, also always soluble, no matter what they're combined with. And that's the only rules that we have directly for positive ions, for cations. So these will be exceptions down here for the generally insoluble ones. Uh, compounds that contain nitrate, acetate, or perchlorate are always soluble, no exceptions also. Um, the halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine, 
are generally soluble, and now we have a couple of exceptions. Uh, silver halide, copper one halide, mercury one halide, and lead two halide are insoluble, so that they would form precipitates. Sulfates are generally soluble, but barium sulfate, mercury one sulfate, and lead two sulfate are insoluble. Strontium sulfate, calcium sulfate are uh, very slightly soluble. So they are will often form precipitates also. The ions, the anions that are generally insoluble include our hydroxides. Uh, so all these hydroxides, the alkali metal hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, are soluble. And then calcium, strontium, barium hydroxide are slightly soluble. Stru stru soluble enough to be considered strong bases, but we still might get precipitates at times. Carbonates are insoluble, except for our alkali metal carbonates, ammonium carbonate, which are soluble. Phosphates are insoluble, except for our alkali metal phosphates, ammonium phosphate, which are soluble. Sulfides and chromate are insoluble, except for our alkali metal and ammonium, which are soluble. So looking at what we have, sodium nitrate, those are both always soluble. So that would be aqueous. Sodium acetate, also both always soluble. So that'd be aqueous. You only need one that is always soluble and it will be soluble. Barium sulfate, the sulfate is generally soluble, although except barium is one that forms a precipitate. So this will be our precipitate which forms a solid. And then silver bromide, the halogens are generally soluble, except with that silver. So this would be a precipitate. That would be our solid. 